exactly interviewing you? Yeah, I've done yeah. a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so whatever they're like that day, that's they're getting Nolan and Ulm version that day. That's you at up to that point right yeah. there. This is you. This is not you in one week. This is not you in one year. You might read a book that completely changes everything, and now you're completely different guy if we have that interview and you ask me those same questions i might have way different answers if you but like if you were the same from that day to 15 years later when you did a podcast there would be i feel like there'd be an issue you know it, for like, sure yeah seriously and i think about it now i'm like yeah i've done some of these in the past like four or five years and if i was going back to listen to those i'd probably be so embarrassed and that's good that's how it should be. Yeah. Just like when you watch film from high school, you're probably like, just cringe. Like, oh my God, I was so bad to where you are now. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. But yeah, it was just kind of a random thought I had driving in today. Like, this interview right now will be completely different in if we did it again in 10 years. Yeah. It'd be different in three months. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially, well, I saw. So, what's the deal with the Iron Man? Like, you're a savage. It took eight hours. Yeah. Holy crap! It, it shouldn't take that long. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. It took that long for me. My uncle did it in six hours and fifteen minutes, and he is the one. That, so, in June of 2022, um, he did an Iron Man, a half Iron Man, 70.3. So it's a 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike, 13.1 mile run, okay. and just consecutively. Um, and he did it at Coeur d'Alene. You said that's a half? That's a half. <sighs> Double that for a full. Think about that. It's hard for my mind to like process that. The swim though, that's an aggressive swim. Yeah, 2.4 miles if you do the full. And you did the full? I did the half. Oh 70.3, 1.2 mile swim. Um, so he did, he did the, um, um, the half in Coeur d'Alene this last year. And so obviously I went to go watch him, yeah. me and my wife and my, my parents were in town too. So we all went and watched with his family and, um, and my other, my cousin, his son, Joseph, and then his wife, Brooke, they run at GCU, they long distance. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're like top athletes in the, really in the world guys averaging like you know guy can run a four minute mile type thing you know yeah so they ran it with him um my cousin did it in like five and a half hours and then brooke did it in i think six hours and then my uncle did it in six hours and 50 minutes but like was like med tent iv you know what i'm saying like Jeez. just absolutely wrecked himself he yeah. was 47 and i was like and we all went out to dinner that night and he was pretty emotional about it because it was like, like what an experience. And, um, he had lost like 40 pounds to get to that point yeah. to finish it. And it was like, it was one of the coolest things, honestly, I've ever seen. And even just standing at the finish line, watching people come through is incredible. Cause people are, there's some like 70, 80 year olds. There are some, um, people that are maybe like 300 plus that are just so mentally tough and are able to like push through and do that, uh, which is crazy to me. But so I'm just like, oh, that's gotta be the last one he ever does. Like that was brutal. He texts me like three weeks later. He's like, I'm doing the Palm Springs half in December. You wanna do it with me? And I was like, I'm just like, there's something to this. If three weeks after he was in the med tent, like couldn't barely walk is ready for the next one. So I had no choice. I'm like, dude, I gotta do it. I have to. So I, I trained for like three and a half months um, and then did it so unprepared. I needed like six months, seven months easily, maybe a year. Yeah. Uh, so unprepared, I've never done any distance stuff before. Everything has been, you know, hit workouts and yeah. you know, VO2, just all about like high intensity. And, yeah. Um, football type sprint workouts. Uh, yeah, anaerobic stuff. Yep. So I went in and the uh, I was telling Brian about this after uh, my uncle. 
I was like, honestly, I didn't even feel that nervous about it. I was just like looking around. I'm like, yeah, I can, I'm going to do this. Like these guys are, if these guys are finishing. I'm going to finish. Yeah. And then about 400 meters into the swim, I look, I kind of just look back as I'm swimming and my calves started to cramp a little bit. And I'm like, Oh, f this is like, I got to do this. I, I have no choice. Yeah. I'm in the water right now. Like I gotta, I have to, it's either oh. like, I'm either going to be like flailing around waving for lifeguards or I just got to go Yeah. and swimming through cramps and, uh, you know, like the water was cold. So you're like heartbeats going and you're like trying to catch your breath because you gotta, you know, you're going, you're swimming, man. It's 50, it was like 56 degree water. Um, and you go straight to survival mode. Like you have no choice, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I realized quickly that I was not prepared for this, like physically not. So then it went straight to just mental, like, you know, I'm like, all these people are here. We just flew down to Palm Springs. I just paid 500 bucks for this race type thing. You know, wow, it got real. yeah, like, it's like, I'm finishing this. There's no other way. And so get through, get to the bike. Yeah, I'm sure once you finish that swim though, you're When I finish the good. swim, I'm like, oh my God, I feel great. And then I get 25 miles into the bike and I'm like, F this, like, I'm never doing this again. This is insane. My ass is like killing me from this seat. My, I always use my cousin's bike, this small ass seat. I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. I got yeah. 30 more miles of this. And then you just keep going and Finally, when I got off the bike was like the moment where I'm like, I know I can run 13 miles. I got, I just can do it. Yeah. I can get that done. And, um, I got a side ache mile five. I had to take a after like mile seven and you're just kind of like, you're just going, <laughs> doing this little old man shuffle to just keep moving. And after finishing, this is the craziest thing throughout the whole race in my mind, I'm like, I'm not doing this again, yeah. like ever. And then I finish. I'm with my uncle. It's a really just an incredible experience. He he broke. He did it in six hours and fifteen minutes. He took thirty five minutes off his time. I'm so juiced for him. Uh, we go out to dinner, and we go out. We go to the hot tub afterwards, and um, we're just talking. And, and he's like, "Let's go down the list of the like first for you." First time ever in that wetsuit. First time swimming in a lake. I was just doing pool swims, you know. Uh, oh, first time wow, on that really? bike. Wow. First time in those shoes. I had to switch my shoes uh, for the bike because I uh, I left my other ones at the other transition point. So like all these firsts, and and I was like, damn, that was a lot. And then two weeks later, I message him. I'm like, when's the next one? For real. And now I'm just kind of I'm. I'm doing, I'm going to do it better this time. I'm doing like a half marathon. I'm going to do a little mini triathlon, like a sprint. Um, and then I'm going to do the Coeur d'Alene in 2024, the half. Okay. So, but yeah, dude, absolutely incredible experience. I would totally recommend it to you if you ever, when you're, I would wait till you're done playing football. Yeah. Uh, there's no point in it. It's not going to help you with football. Um, as far as like long distance stuff, you don't need it. Yeah. But, um, but mentally, that's something I've had to do is try and keep challenging myself mentally yeah. um, and physically because that's what you lose when you're done with the game. There's nothing like the locker room after a win is what I've noticed or nothing like getting a sack in front of you know 60,000 people and solely just eyes on you. With the roar, it's like that jolt of like... You know, it's like a drug, and it's for 10 seconds, and then it's like, all right, let's go get another one. Let's work for weeks and months, maybe years, to get that feeling again or whatever. And when you lose that, there's not a lot that you can, you know, that you're going to find to to replace that. So you find find other ways to do it, and that, that was one. That was super cool. I was... Afterwards, it was like, you have that feeling of like, damn, you worked hard for something and accomplished it. But then you're like, I, I look at it like that one will be the one 
10 years from now, I was like, God, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we were talking about with Phil, it's the same thing. Yeah. God, I can't believe it took me over eight hours to do that. <laughs> you know? Well, I saw the video of you coming across the finish line, and I was like, just looking at the shape you were in, and I was like, I don't know if I, I would have to train. I mean, Bro. the fact you didn't do any open water, though, like, no. you're really ballsy for that. That was dumb, yeah. But um, my uncle weighs the same. He's 6'4", 225. I came in at 6'3", 225. And I was, like, a way different 225 than he was. Like, you know, because I've been lifting my whole life. And he's, a, he's not as, um, you know, he's older, too. And uh, he worked me. Like he's, he did his swim in 33 minutes. He did the bike in 2.45. Like he just killed it, absolutely killed it. And um, it just kind of shows you like it, with that Ironman, with that venue and like, it doesn't matter what you look like. That doesn't mean anything. It's, you know, the training reveals itself like right away in there. And, that, and he's been training. Like, he's got a good year of training, and it absolutely showed. Yeah. And mine got exposed. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. it's, so interesting. it's funny. I was just talking to the guys yesterday, and I was saying, you know, I've gotten to the point where before, like you were saying, you know, like, such tunnel vision, and I was willing to freaking do anything, be alone, and I still am, but I told them, I said, you know, some one of the things I look forward to the most is just coming in and like working out with you guys. Like, and I told him I was like, it makes sense why some guys struggle after obviously like the, that like feeling of being at the top, but also like guys don't have that anymore. To like, like I'm going with the boys and we're growing and we're working for a compelling future. You know, and mm -hmm. unless you find that in other ways, like you're saying, that's why I love. And I I don't know if you're in this sort of stuff, but like the extreme hot cold, like the sauna mm -hmm. and all this like. That's, like I was saying, I'm going to the lake here, and I, I'm going to go to, like, Sweden or whatever those places are where it's, yeah. like, 200 degrees sauna right into the cold, but I love that. And even just, like, watching what the surfers do, we'll do, like, brick workouts in the pool on our rest days. So we just go to the bottom and walk on the bottom of the floor with the bricks and, like, jump up, get air. But, like, any sort of way, like you're saying, I can find to get uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, the, and especially in the sauna, if you're in a 200 degree sauna, you go for like 30 minutes. It's probably one of the worst pains you'll ever feel like in your life. Like we were in there and I hadn't felt that, like, you know, it's just like a whole, you're in a whole other universe and it, like almost passing out, feeling like I'm going to throw up just by sitting in a hot room. Like it's yeah. a crazy thing, but you get out of there and it's the best feeling ever. Cause you didn't check the time and you just went, you know, and that's yeah. like, that's the coolest thing about all that stuff. I love it. That's what Tony Robbins says. Get out of your mind. Get into your body. Like when you're in that, you know, when you're or when you're looking for that thing, or you're um, in a funk, or you know something. Yeah. You know, we're just mind block, and you just get into your body, and it unlocks and unleashes things. Yeah. So I love that shit. That's great. Well, I mean, clearly, if you did the Iron Man, I was like, and I just was looking at the clock for a second. I was, like in my head, I was like. Eight minutes. There's no eight minute race. I was like, yeah. whoa, eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's staggered. So some people start, you know, right away. Some people wait the you know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah. So it's not a big. I pack think mine was water. like eight twenty. Um, but you notice that you look at it. It was funny because the I got some shit from some of my buddies because this like older lady, some sprinting in front, <laughs> like, takes the lead on it, and I'm just like, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was back with her. Well, was, we were got to a point it was like we're probably like a tenth of a mile away and we're getting close and I um, I was kind of getting to that point where it's like do you pass or do you and then I saw her like family there so I just kind of like tapered off I'm like you go you go take it you know have have the moment like how freaking cool is that this lady was probably in her 40s um, and like you know she just went for eight plus hours straight you know, grind. Right from the start, it's a grind. And so impressive. It was very impressive. From all different types of people. You know, like that moment for her might have been my moment on the football field. Because the, the Ironman was not even, it's not close to what it's like on the field or um, the feeling in the locker room. Like that's yeah. different than anything I think I'll ever experience, minus having a child, obviously. Yeah. Um, but there are moments that are like similar that to those points, you know, like when I got married was a, a day where 
I remember I was standing on there. It was funny because me and my wife, we've been together for almost three years, lived together for a couple of years. You think like, yeah, this is, but even just standing there, I'm like, you know, heart beating, kind of like shaking, like, wow, this is a moment, you know? You don't have very many of those um, just in life in general. But in football, you get, especially when you get to play till you're 30, you have, you almost get like uh, spoiled because you get, you put in all this work and there's, at some point, there's a reward for it. You know, whether that be in practice, whether that be in a game, um, in the locker room, like there's a reward where, and it feels freaking great. And then when it's done, it's like, damn, I, you got spoiled, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because now it's hard to find. But, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about like ProVision. And this is one thing I was thinking about coming in here. Like, because so I followed, I listened to an old podcast. And uh, before I even came here, I knew who you were. Because I looked up like Eastern Legends and just wanted to like hear from you guys and stuff. And, uh, you know, you were a UPS driver for a little bit. You coached at a high school for a little bit, right, when you were done playing. So, like, what was kind of that journey? And, and was ProVision always something that you kind of wanted to create? Um, and, and was like doing UPS where you kind of like building up the, the capital to be able to start something like this or like kind of just talk to me about that. I'm really interested to hear the story behind that. Yeah. So I guess when I was done, I was, I'll just start when I was done playing in the CFL. So I, um, I kind of knew that uh, my time was coming. I had a, my last year, uh, wasn't great and I had surgery on my knee. So I felt like, all right, I'm probably going to get cut, and I know I won't get re-signed for even close to the amount of money I was making. Um, and with with pro ball, like you have to uh, you have to weigh out like is it you know as much fun as it is, it's still taking a toll on your body and probably years off your life. So you do have to look at the monetary like, all right, is this worth like putting my life you know out there? Because really, that's what it is, and we just saw that last week. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it, it was to that point where it's like, all right, I, I got to start thinking about moving on. Um, so I, I actually started working as a, just a seasonal helper at UPS before I was even cut. Um, Interesting. just to make some, yeah, just cause I wanted to kind of start figuring out like where I was going to go. Yeah. And I had a, you know, business management degree. Um, so I was looking at like, and I heard some good things about UPS and there was one, um, there's a, a couple of them in the area, so I thought, okay, maybe I can get in and be a manager there or something. So got in there, um, and then right about the time, uh, or right before I went driving, I had uh, gone into high school coaching um, at Mead High School Okay. locally. My brother-in-law was playing his senior year, playing defensive line, and um, so I really wanted to coach him, and he really wanted me to, to do it as well, so... I was like, okay, I'll, cool. I'll do this uh, for you. And, um, and, you know, I knew that I was going to like it too. So did that, um, and it was awesome, so fun. Uh, it was great to hang out with him and, and just watch him get better and progress. And, and I met some other, you know, some other guys in that D-Land room that I still talk with. Uh, one of them's uh, a very close friend of mine, you know, that was a senior, you know, when I was there. So it was kind of, it's yeah. cool that... Um, uh, those experiences and then but and then that's how I actually met uh, coach Bruce he came in as the DB's coach uh, because his um, his brother Jackson was a player there as well so he wanted to coach his brother and um, that's where we we met um, and so then right about that time uh, a driver position opened up and I was kind of looking at it like, well, I want to be, you know, supervisor. And, but they were like, if you get this driver position, like you'll make just as much as a supervisor, but you'll be able to get into a role in management way easier yeah. with that experience. Yeah. Because that's kind of like at UPS, it's like driver is the, the top of as being as far as like in labor and being part of the union that's like the top position yeah um, pay scale and all that and then when you get into management obviously you can go up in different ways but um so then i got into that i had to stop coaching high school ball 
but I absolutely loved working with the kids. Like it was so fun. And um, so me and Bruce and uh, Dario Romero, another, I mean, Eastern legend, Hall of Famer, played 10 years, uh, NFL, CFL. I had met him in Edmonton uh, when I had my rookie, my rookie year, my first two years. He, so after my uh, rookie year there, he invited me to come down and train with him. This is back in 2010. And um, so I trained with him in the off season, like learned how to train. I didn't really know how to train yet. That's how I learned. Um, his wife introduced me to my wife, who I'm married to now. Um, it was just like a whole wow. weird thing. That's kind of a side story. But anyway, back to um, starting ProVision. Us three, uh, JC Sherritt, um, another Eastern guy, Luke Fritz, and um, yeah, we, uh, Jake Hoffman, yeah. another Eastern guy. And we all, um, yeah, we started this thing. We've had multiple, multiple coaches that have come in and out, just depending on if, you know, they're living in Spokane, if their job's letting them do it. But, um, yeah, that was kind of the guys that, where we started this and were able to reach not just one team, but every kid, yeah. you know. And that's, that's the coolest part about it is even right, you know, in the past we've had kids from Lewiston, Two hour drive. Yeah. Uh, Wenatchee, it's a three and a half hour drive. We have kids now from Montana, three hour drive. Um, you know, Priest River, just like everywhere um, that are coming to get this work and, and learn from guys that have done it. And, um, and really, like, the football part of it is, is cool, but that's not even, that's not really what it's about, you know? Yeah. It's about um, everything pretty much other than that. It's about like building leaders and 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 just showing them what they're capable of and and showing them that the things you're learning and doing like to get better on the football field that's how you get better at other avenues in your life you know like being consistent and and you know being disciplined and um, and you know we really just try and teach that aspect of it you know more importantly and let them know that and understand that um, because I think that gets lost maybe sometimes in in high school programs but um yeah so that's kind of that's how it started it was about 12 kids and um you know now we just had a practice yesterday there's you know over 80 kids there and um it's just been it's been awesome so that's that's how that started and uh honestly it's i've throughout like with the ups driving kind of gave me the the opportunity to do uh, provision and UPS because I had um, full control of my day you know the harder I worked the faster I got done and I get to practice um, recently I, I switched to a supervisor role uh, where I work in the mornings and I'm done um, you know around noon or 1 p.m. and I can uh, go straight to uh, provision and I have that you know whole afternoon and evening window um, and then eventually you know it'll just be provision so that's awesome yeah that's kind of how it's how it's gone over the last six years I guess yeah yeah that's really really cool um, I'm just really excited to see you guys grow I think it's gonna be huge and even I just there there wasn't much else that I heard of in the, in the Spokane area so it'll be exciting especially once you're Seven on seven team is gonna start to compete and mm -hmm. seeing you guys win a ton too. I think it's awesome. Sure. Sure. All of ours are. At the end of the day. Yeah, and even what you said earlier when you were like, There's stuff that I don't wanna do and I just was reading this thing the other day and it was this guy was like every single week I write down everything I do. And then I you know, grab a highlighter, a red one and an orange one. And the red one I do for things I hate and the orange one I do for like things that I could get other people to do. And he's like and my goal is just pay people to do those things. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's, it's, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. Like my day, like I want to get, the reason I want to get out of UPS, not because I don't like, like my supervisor job, it's freaking great. I love it. Like it's fun. I like the people there uh, and everything, but it's not how I want to be spending my first like six hours a day, you know? Like yeah. I want to be 
completely so intentional with the first, like where I'm waking up, I'm meditating, I'm reading, I'm journaling, I'm working out. Like I, these are my day. I yeah. start it. I really start doing any sort of work around like noon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like where I'm planning and you know getting things done for the future. Yeah, the and, important stuff. And then working with kids for a couple hours. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's where my day is needs to get to. So every move I make has got to be, is this going to get me to that day? Yeah. You know? Wow. Because our, our time, like, literally doing, you know, eight hours of that type of work, and if you were getting to a point where you were working two hours uh, a day or, um, you know, by your own choice, and that makes your entire money for the year, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, how are you, you know? those steps towards it is it going to take more of your time to do it or less yeah I'm, no, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan a, of the less <laughs> me too. I'm on the same like and that's what I've realized like well obviously time is the most valuable thing but I really started to be like okay, I need to increase my skills because if I have more skills I can create value for the people and if I can create value for the people then I can make more money mm-hmm. and then I can make more money to pay people to do the things that I don't want to do because I just want to do what I do best and then pay everyone to do the rest. Like that's really it. And, yes. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you're you're definitely getting there. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I am. <laughs> there you go. I am. Wow. See, it's funny. Usually, that's crazy because we'll catch each other, like me and Trey, or the guys that are around and. You just caught yourself like, oh man, if you played with us or if we played with you, it would have been <laughs> dangerous. But I'm telling you this, bro, I didn't know any of this type of stuff about like how you speak, how you think. Like yeah. I didn't know any of this stuff until I started reading, I'm tell- in my 30s when I was done playing football, like when I really started reading books and listening to podcasts and the guy that got me started on it was Ryan Sawyer because he was kind of in that same deal. He was my D-line coach. Yeah, yeah. He broke out of the coaching world, and now he's um, doing his own professional coaching. Like, um, he's you know, one of the top guys in this area for sure, but him and his wife do it. It's called IHP, and Integrated Human Performance. Awesome. And, like, a uh, big-time mentor of mine and guy that put me onto a – he put me onto this podcast, and then I just started – listening and then I started listening to guys that he was interviewing and then I just the fucking spiral dude. So it's been awesome. I hope that someone listening to this literally just took that though because like yeah. that's what it all is. people don't realize. Like I really told someone this. I was like, think about this. This book that some person wrote, right? That's their life work. Mm-hmm. And that's in two hundred pages. So they just put decades into days. And you're not gonna go and, and like dive into that? Like it's crazy. Like podcasts, like all that sort of stuff, right? That's hundred percent podcasts consistently like with the same guy for sure because you're getting his whole life right yeah. and that's why I actually do love listening to books because books I'll, I'll listen to books over podcasts for the most part yeah, yeah, yeah I listen or mostly I just listen to books and now I'm kind of just hooked on yours your podcast I just listen to that when I'm you know when I'm not reading a book or in between books or um, and because like you said they spent so much, like they dedicated a, an entire day maybe to a page on that book. Yeah. Like they spent so much time and effort into that thing. Like there's going to be so many nuggets that I can get from that. And it's not just off the cuff, you know. It's like they, they put a ton of time into that. And obviously people put time into podcasts, but, you know, books are like, yeah, so much knowledge. Yeah, for sure. Okay, anyway, so let me, let me read this. No, it's all good. I, uh, so like I said, I got this quote from that, like top 50, which is really cool that you're on that top 50 athletes, right? In big sky history. Like that's pretty sweet. But, uh, you said, uh, get to the fourth quarter and that's where you take over. Uh, it's what I've done and what I still do. I've never been the most athletic guy, but I'll work the offensive line. That's where I take advantage of him when he's tired and I'm not, I've done it in my whole career. Even if I've been unproductive for three and a half quarters at the end of the game, you can make something happen. Like that, that was freaking fire. And so when I, when I look at this, it's like, okay, what, what training, what in your, and obviously that's the mindset right there. But like, I've never heard that before. Like 
someone thinking like that, like even if it's three and a half quarters, I can still do some damage in that last little bit. Like, where does that come from, and what did you do to get you to that point where you could play like that? Uh, yeah, I no, I definitely like stand by that still, you know. And that was a that was a while ago. I remember that. Um, it's it started. I think I, I give a lot of credit to. Um, my coaches, you know, and I don't remember it, everything about my coaches, you know, in third and fourth and fifth. I don't, but I do remember there was a moment in high school where I was a sophomore and I was trying to be, you know, get varsity playing time and like any sophomores, like they wanted to get in. And, yeah. and I remember, and my coach, my head coach was very demanding and very structured and we had a great, um, just a great, uh, great culture there and it was good like I feel very blessed to be to walk into that but I remember like conditioning at the end of practice and it's it's really about who who wants it right I I see a lot of things now like it's not helpful it doesn't help you know a lot of people say that and and I'll never say I'm not a black and white person at all it's like all right you know I'll say okay maybe maybe that's right but I do know that at the end of practice, after a long practice and you got a condition, it is about like who wants it. And I remember I was a sophomore, a lineman, and I was finishing first. And we were running, you know, whatever, 60 yard sprints. And I just kept finishing first. And my head coach, uh, for the last two reps, he like pulled me aside. And basically in front of the whole team and was like, this guy right here just gave everything he had for these first eight reps and he beat all of you in every single one. Like he's sitting out these two. And you know, I, I wasn't, at the time I wasn't like, oh that, no coach, let me get the two. I was kind of just in shock, like, wow. Me just giving that extra effort, I just got kudos from my head coach. And as a sophomore in high school, that's a big deal to to get that. And yeah. I, the fact that I still remember, that was 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, still remember that moment. And it was had nothing to do with a game or, or anything. But I think that for me, it locked in my head, like I'm going to be rewarded for giving, you know, giving everything I have and pushing myself a little farther than I think I can. Um, and that just, that stuck with me. And so like, as far as conditioning throughout my entire career, I've always made it a point to be at the top. You know, if we're coming back, even in the pros, we're coming for uh, the 300 yard shuttle conditioning where yeah. you run two of them with a two minute break. Yeah, and they're I've checking their heart rate and, you know, how fast you can recover from it. And, um, you know, always just being in the top, top three, top five on the team as a lineman. That's crazy. You know, like yeah. that, that was kind of just something that. I knew for me personally, if I'm at the top, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be able to make some more plays. I'm going to be able to make this team. And, you know, it worked. So, you know, does it work like that for everybody? I, you know, everyone's different. But for me, that's the way it worked. And I'm, I, I hold true to that quote, too. I was definitely not the most talented athletic guy ever on any of the teams I had. In fact, I would say I was never the best D-lineman on my team as far as um, athletic ability ever on any team. Uh, but that's where you find those small things that suck that you got to just keep doing over and over again where you you know can set yourself apart. So Yeah, so talk a little bit about that too though because it also is like another uh, article, article, I can't remember which one it was, but it, so it said like, it was like someone said or you said that it was like pretty like bad your freshman year and you got kind of like thrown into the mix, right? Like because the injuries or something, you played as like a true freshman, right? Mm-hmm. So how and and then obviously like that's the thing we shared in common. Like when I first got here, it was it was horrible. Like <laughs> it was atrocious, but <laughs> you, you know we figured it out. So yeah. what led you to to figuring it out and like what was your like what led you to not be discouraged when? You know, you just were watching the film, and I'm sure you're just like, Jesus, who is this, you know, like... Yeah, there was, uh, I had a really, I had a coach that was really, really hard on me, just because he saw potential, you know, obviously. 
Um, and but at the time, as a true freshman, you're like, this coach hates me. You know, I suck. He, I can't do anything right. Um, and it was almost like kind of a good cop, bad cop thing because I do remember we were in film and it was against Weber State and I was playing against a guy that ended up getting drafted like fourth round baller and I was you know I'm 18 years old 200 pounds and I was I got him a few times on a pass rush got a QB hit and I'm just like all right this is this is my time like this is the play I'm gonna get some some kudos from coach like this is sweet I'm watching it I'm feeling good I think one of my D linemen was like hey nice nice rush you know we're in, in meetings and and then my coach just rips into me because I think I took an inside move and he's like, if you don't, you know, if he keeps the ball and runs, he's going to get contained. And he was just so nitpicky with it. And, at the, and I'm just like, I can't win. I finally make a play and I get yelled at for it. Like I haven't been told good job once this year. This is week six. Um, wow. You know, and I'm 18, so I don't have that. I don't have big picture thinking whatsoever. I'm yeah. just right there in the moment. And coach, so coach Anna at the time was an assistant, uh, a defensive assistant. And he was in our D-line room yeah. that year, my freshman year. And I remember him pulling me aside and we just had a talk down the phase hall. And he was like, hey man, like you're doing a really, really good job. Coach sees a lot in you. That's why he's hard on you. That's why um, he's on you with that stuff. Um, you just gotta keep working, man. Like you got a lot of potential. We see a, a great future here for you. You just got to keep working. And that, I still remember, you know, that sticks with me, like, that moment, because nobody else was saying that to me. I didn't really have, I haven't made those connections yet with the, with my guys, you know, that I still have connections with now. Yeah. Hadn't, hadn't made those yet. Um, so that, I think, really helped catapult me to, just keep going and keep grinding and not get too down on myself. Because there were times in the dorm room, man, where I'm just like, what am I doing? This sucks. Practice sucks. I get yelled at every day. Um, I'm, you know, getting beat up by these guys. These, are, these guys are huge. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that helped a lot. But I think also if you play, if you play FCS ball and you really – you know, you're really committed to it, and you really give everything, you, you're you going to have a chip on your shoulder. Um, because I don't think there's many kids growing up, especially where I was from, like, I was looking at UW, and I'm looking at Oregon, Boise State, like, I'm looking at these D1 uh, FBS, you know, powerhouse programs that, you know, that I had posters up on my wall, um, you know, like, my family had my, on my mom's side from Nebraska, I had Nebraska posters on my wall. You know, I got family sending me Nebraska shirts and, you know, that type of stuff. Like, you, these are the dreams you have as a kid. So I go to Eastern Washington, and I'm kind of looking at some of the guys that went to UW in Oregon from high school in my area, and I'm like, I'm better than you. You know, I, I, like, I can play better than you. So even though nobody was telling me straight to my face, that you know you're not gonna make it or blah 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 in my head I'm like that's what everyone thinks though because they didn't give me the scholarship or you know I, I wasn't first team all state or whatever um so that's kind of how i looked at it like you're going and proving people wrong <laughs>